So this app is starting to look really good. And what we're going to build next is going to be the login. We need users to be able to log in. They can register, but we don't have any actual security. We don't have the Spring Boot Starter security dependency. And that's what we're going to do first. We're going to just go into our Palm Excel file, just as we always do, and go ahead and copy and paste Spring Boot Starter security into the Palm Excel file. If you don't have it, you can get it from my GitHub or you can just quickly Google it. It's really easy to find, but make sure that you have Spring Boot Starter security in here so that we can actually add all of the wonderful security code to our application. And once you do that, go ahead and run it. And the first thing that you'll notice when you actually run it is you will get this right here using generated security password. As soon as you actually add Spring Boot security to the Palm Excel file, you're going to get this. And what you can do is copy this password into the actual application and you're going to get this right here. And you type in user and then you type in the actual password for it that you have right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And just right out of the box, you get some pretty bad security, but I mean, it's something you're gonna to have to do a lot of configuration, but it's a good step in the right direction. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually add the login page first. The custom login is going to be a lot different from what you're used to. It's not confusing at all, but it is a little bit different. So let's go ahead into our auth controller and add this uh, login. So we're going to go get mapping. It's going to be a git and we are going to have a URL of login just like this. And we're going to go public string. It's going to be a login page. And then we are going to return the login just like this. And as always, we get the green squiggly line telling us that we don't have an actual view. So let's go into the templates and let's actually add our HTML file. And it's going to be a good old uh, login.html. The next thing that you want to do is we can go ahead and copy the actual register. The register is going to be very similar to the login, except that the actual uh, re login is not going to have the email. We are going to authenticate through username and not the email because that is what Spring Security custom login requires by default. And it's just probably all that you need anyway. We are not going to have any of the TH ifs here. And a lot of this is going to be pretty different. Strangely enough, we're not even going to have TH fields either. You don't have TH fields for custom logins and and like I said, a lot of this is going to be very different than what you are used to. So the first thing that we're going to need to do, since we don't have the TH ifs for each individual inputs, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the register and we are going to copy the TH or one of our TH ifs, and we are going to copy and paste it into the actual login page. So go into your clubs.list and copy this, you are registered successfully TH if right here. And we're gonna use this instead of actually those previous validation error words that we had before. So what we're gonna do, we're going to take this TH if, and we're going to go right under here and we're going to copy and paste this one. And we are going to have param error and we are also going to have param.logout. We are going to have invalid username right here. So we will have invalid username and password. And we are also going to have this say, you have been logged out. So you have been logged out just like that. And that will look awesome. You can also change this to red if you want to. I'm gonna leave them success. I think they look good as successes, but if you want them to light up red, you could change these to alerts and it will do the exact same thing. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to a login. And this is going to line up with our custom login that we are going to configure and our security config that we're going to create here in a second. The next thing that we are going to have to do is we're going to have to add IDs to these because there are no actual fields or timely fields and it's relying purely off Spring Security, it's going to be a lot different from using regular timely. So you need IDs and names for Spring Security to be able to recognize it. So we're gonna have a username right here and we're also going to do the same thing for our password. And we also need an extra little alligator symbol right here. So we're gonna go ID, this is going to be password. And we are also going to have the name of password down here so that once again, Spring Security will recognize it. 
Also, this is going to be a register. This is going to be, we'll say something like, don't have an account already. Register here. And that will take us to our register page that we just created a minute ago. And we'll also change that to the login button. Also, you're going to need to add a value right here, or once again, security is not going to recognize it. So make sure you have that value of login and make sure you have the type submit. Otherwise, it's going to give you a bunch of errors or it could give you an error. Might not, but it probably will. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to uh, start worrying, quote unquote, about our layout. We're not gonna really worry about our layout, but we're gonna have to actually uh, take care of this down here. Okay, so we have a sign in. And what we're going to do, we're going to replace all these threfs. So we're going to go thref, th, so thref. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go thref. This is going to be the login. And we'll change this to logins just so that it looks good. And we'll go register. No surprises there. And we're also going to do the register right here. And we're also going to have our logout here in a second. So we're going to also configure our logout as well too. And this page already looks really good. So let's also take care of the alert on our register page. So we added these H fields right here, but also we need to have another TH if, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to go to my register page uh, right here. And I am going to copy this right down below and I'm going to say username or email already exist just like this. Okay, so that looks great. And we also need to change this to fail and we will configure this here in a second. And also we need to go down here and we have our login already, but we don't have our register. So I'm going to take this TH ref right here. I'm going to go ahead, copy and paste it. So we will have a register right here and we will call this. So that's going to be the register and that is looking good. So, and we'll say login here. You can change, you could call that whatever you want to, but I'm just going to say login here in case the user doesn't actually, in case the user already has a login. So the next thing that we're going to do is we need to go ahead and configure a default username and a default password so that we can actually test this out because we don't have actual bcrypt installed yet. So in the meantime, before we actually install bcrypt, what we're going to do is we're going to go into here. We're going to have spring security username password. We're going to call this test and we're going to do the same thing right here. So spring security user dot name, and we're going to call this test as well too, so that we can actually have a way to log in. The next thing that we're going to do is we need to change the actual validation for our get register form. We have these reject values right here, but they don't work very well. So I'm going to go ahead and change this out. You don't, you actually don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm going to make this look a little bit better. I was testing this just a second ago and it looked really bad. It just looked terrible. And I think just redirecting it to a register fail will look way better and be a lot more impressive because people are going to hopefully actually be logging into this. They might not, but if you have an employer that actually tries to log into it and you have a really crappy validation system, uh, it might, I don't know, probably not, but it could blow the interview or blow the job. You never know, but I'm just gonna make it look better. Okay, so we already have that. The next thing that we need to do is we actually need to go into here and do our security config. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to add a package. I'm going to call this security just like this. And I'm going to add a good old, I call it a security config. You can call it whatever you want to, but I think security config looks great and people it's very explicit and people will know exactly what it is. The next thing that we need to do, we need to make sure that spring boot can actually see the security config and tell spring boot that it is indeed a security config file so you need to add these two annotations to it or it's not going to work the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to actually configure our uh, security filter chain so if you don't know what a security filter chain is I actually have a, a whole entire video on this but it's kind of the way that it sounds like it's just a chain of methods that are going to control 
how your security works. And it's pretty much a really fancy configuration file for developers. So if you don't know what it is, just think of it as a really cool, very robust way to configure your security. And that's really, that's kind of like all it is really, to be honest with you. Okay, so then we're gonna go here. We're gonna have HTTP. We're gonna turn off CSRF because this is a learning, you know, just to learn if you are deploying this, you will have to do more configuration. But if you're already this far into the course, you're probably a pretty decent developer. So you could probably find how to do this on your own. It's not, it's not complicated at all. Then we're gonna set our ant matchers so that it doesn't block the actual login. It doesn't block the register and doesn't block the clubs. So we have clubs. And then we're going to actually unblock our CSS too. So we have this really uh, big CSS file for all our fancy bootstrap. And we also need to make sure that security is not going to block that as well too, because it will block it. And if you boot up your app and your CSS isn't working, that is the reason why you this part has not been configured. So we're gonna go down here. Then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep going down. We're gonna configure the and, we'll go here, then we'll go form login. And this is this custom form login thing that I keep talking about. So we're gonna have a form right here. We're gonna have another form and we will just go down and start configuring. So we'll have the login page. And this is really cool. I'm not gonna lie. This is actually a very easy, a lot of magic going on. Not gonna lie, there's there's a lot of magic going on. Uh, you, it's kind of one of these situations where you pray this doesn't break because you'll never be able to debug it, but it is really easy and it's really convenient and it's kind of nice, so that's what I chose. All right, so we're gonna go here and then we're going to set our login page. And this is what's going to do the actual post method. If you notice, we're, we haven't configured a post method yet, and this is basically just going to do all of our actual post, and it's also going to handle the failure. So if it fails as well too, that's that's what this is going to do. And you may have noticed when we were configuring our actual register page, we added these things up here. We added this param fail. That is what this is right here. So if you see uh, login error is equal to true or login error is equal to fail, that is what this param thing is doing. So we've got our failure URL. Now we're gonna go permit all. Then this is what we're gonna do. We're going to configure our logout. So it's even gonna handle our logout. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, so we're gonna have, we got our logout. And the next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna go back down we're gonna make this look super awesome. And then we're gonna pass in an ant path. So let's see, ant path request matcher. And this is going to be for our logout. So we're gonna go logout right here. All right, we are making good time. So we're gonna have a permit all, and then we're gonna go down here. We're gonna go ahead, close this out. And also we are going to return it. So we're going to return HTTP build, and this is going to finish out the builder pattern and make it so that we have officially just wired up all of this awesome security stuff with relatively e with a lot of ease and a lot of less effort than what we would have had to do before. So for our actual layout, this is supposed to be a lowercase l right here. And the actual logout is supposed to be logout. I actually I accidentally put events right there as well too. So let's go ahead making a lot of mistakes i'm really sorry but let's go ahead and hopefully third time is a charm so i'm going to go ahead into here i'm going to go to the login page so we go test we have test we're going to go ahead we're going to log in close out all that stuff then we're going to test our logout button as well too and look at that you have been logged out so let's go ahead let's also test our register as well too we'll say user user one then we'll go here we'll go user one then we'll go user we'll just put user one for our password we'll go ahead and register and it tells us it gives us a fancy little uh message right here a nice little text box that tells us you are registered successfully and it looks awesome so we've got our login figured out now what we are going to do is we are going to actually start working out 
all of the user clubs so that we can tie the users in the clubs to the actual events so that when a user creates a club, it will create it with a record for each individual user. It will be tied to it and we can add more security to our application. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smack that like button, make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.